This is the word of the Lord in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse 17. It said, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. God bless you. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your unexplainable. We cannot pay. For your unmerited love, unconditional, it reaches the highest heights, it lowest depths, and finds us where we are every time. We thank you for loving us, even when we didn't love you. And we ask that you would increase our love for you, as it should be. We ask you to do it now in Jesus' name. We pray that you would pour out your spirit in this service. That you would give us a word from above. Not from Harvey, but from you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with the wisdom of words. Lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolish. But unto us which are saved, hallelujah, it is the power of God. As it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. The emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. <laughs> On last week, we began our journey to Calvary with this message, the preaching of the cross. And we said unequivocally that the Execution on the cross was a form of capital punishment. It was a method of determent. We added that uh, to die on the cross was in some ways a payment back to the victims of the family upon which the crime had been operated. He said not only was it a payment to the family, but it was also a payment to the state, the municipality, the country where the crime had occurred. To die on a cross was one of the most humiliating forms of death. It was public. The criminal was exposed nakedly there. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And anyone and everyone could see for themselves the actual dying of that individual. But today we want to look more intently at these verses and glean from these three verses the subject the cross of Christ. The cross of Christ, because as 
Reverend Bernard pointed out that it is on the hill far away. There is an old rugged cross. And Reverend Bernard had took the time to point to each of us a clear indication that he saw no difference between the cross and Christ. But he said that I, through a vision from above, I could see clearly that the Christ and the cross were inseparable. Praise the Lord. My brothers and sisters, it is not only is Reverend Bernard right and correct in his assessment of the cross and Christ. He is in line scripturally with what the Bible teaches us about Jesus and the cross. Well, you see, the man Jesus has now become synonymous and linked unequivocally to the symbol of the cross. This is so true. It is true that until every time anybody sees a cross, their minds automatically connected to the Christ. People wear crosses on their necks. People place them on their ring. Hang them in their ears as earrings. Even put them on their bodies as tattoos, praise the Lord. On their cars on their tags, in their houses, offices, as decorations. We as a church have even placed crosses on our walls, on this pulpit, baptism pools, and all around the sanctuary. But every time anybody sees the cross, we do not have to put in caption we're talking about Jesus. Because they automatically know that there is an unbreakable link. As Reverend Bernard would say, there is something inseparable about the cross and Christ. And all over the world, everywhere people see a cross, they associate it with our Lord and Savior. Because the cross has become the symbol of Jesus. It is his trademark. It is his methodology. It is the entire makeup and personality of who he is. This has been the case for centuries, because the church has now flown the banner of the cross as the emblem of hope in dark times. The church had lifted up the cross in the most difficult periods of its history. The church has even taken the cross into battle under the crusade war. We have painted the cross on our cathedrals, in our windows, on our doors. We've even taken crosses to the tombs. They're even on our caskets now. Sepulchers everywhere in any cemetery. I would be shocked and surprised if you're not able to locate somewhere in that cemetery. A cross on top of those graves. But it is by direct inference talking about a man that died on that cross. Hallelujah. And as we move closer to the cross, I want us to be reminded of three realities about the cross of Christ. I'm going to give these to you very quickly. The first one is the cross is an injury. The cross is an injury. You see, 
you need to be aware of pilgrim rest that an injury has been sustained on that cross. It's the injury of a man. The injuries of a special man. But the injuries on this man were not only inflicted to the man, they were also inflicted to the cross. For you see, the nails that went through his feet also went through that cross. The nails nailed in his hands also went through that cross. You need to be aware that the blood soaking from his back worked its way into the crevices of that cross. The cross absorbed most of the blood that we so adequately claim as our own. You know how we say, I know it was the blood. We plead the blood. We talk about the blood. We tell the devil the blood of Jesus is against you. But the cross has more blood on it than anything else in the world. This cross has taken with it the blunt of the crucifixion because the cross is an injury in case you don't know it by now let me just be clear here and tell you that jesus was injured uh, on the cross so much so until the prophet said surely he has borne our griefs i feel like preaching this morning he has carried our sorrow Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God, afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgression. Hallelujah. And he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace is laid upon him and with his stripes. Hallelujah, we're healed. He was oppressed, he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought to the lamb as a lamb to slaughter a sheep before his shearers as dumb. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He is acquainted with grief. He is fully aware of what you're going through. There is absolutely nothing in this world that you can go through that Jesus cannot relate to. No matter what you're facing today, when he went to the cross, he took upon himself your sin and mine. And God has laid upon him the iniquity of us all cross is an injury I don't want you to be confused here today because every injury is not the same see you could be injured a man trying to open a can of beans but you can also be injured intentionally when others have inflicted upon you the pain that you did not desire somebody came in church this morning you're not injured accidentally you're injured intentionally the devil been trying to get you but somebody can shout greater is he that is in me he that's in the world the devil should have killed me when I had a chance he should have took me out when I was lost in my sin he should have got me when I was clubbing and running the street. He done messed up because I know what Jesus had done for me. Hallelujah. The cross is an injury. The cross is an injury to a man, but not only to the man, but it is an injury to reality. It's an injury 
to all of creation. It is an injury to the thing that stands above all else. It is an injury to God himself. I hear you saying, Reverend, how is it even possible that God could sustain an injury? How, how is it even possible that the maker of the universe, the creator of all things, can sustain an injury? How is it even possible that the one who is and is to come, the one who was before there was a beginning, how can he sustain an injury? He did it willfully. So no man can take my life. I got to lay it down. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. Not only brothers and sisters at the cross, an injury, but it is also an index. Point number two, uh, the cross is an index. I-N-D-E-X, you see, beloved, an index is something that is used to point to something else. When used in books, uh, an index used to help us to find more quickly what it is that we're looking for. And brothers and sisters, I submit this morning that the cross is an index, you see, because if you're lost, the cross will find you. If you don't know what to do, the cross will guide you. If you're in sin, the cross will set you free. If you don't know which way to go, the cross will show you the way. It is an index because if you feel like giving up, the cross will give you some strength from the inside out. I tell you, it's an index because it will help you to find what you're looking for. So many people are looking for peace in the wrong place and they'll never find it. They're looking for love in all the wrong places and you'll never find it. You're looking for money and riches and you'll never find it. But if you find Jesus, you will see that he's more than enough. Look at somebody that say he's more than enough. Oh yeah, there's an old song that says I found everything that I need and I found it at the cross. I found all that I need and I found it in the man named Jesus. The cross is an index because it will show you what you need and show you how to get to it. Let me be clear here. This index is also in a book called the Bible. You need to learn how to use your index. Look at somebody and tell me, use your index. Oh, yeah, yeah. When you see you got trouble on every hand, you can look at the index and find out that that man is born of a woman, but, but a, a, a full of days of trouble. But they are short days because God will deliver those afflicted. When you get in trouble and find that you don't know which way to turn, you can look in the index and find the scripture that says that I will try up in Christ. If you're in trouble and you're sick in your body, if you look in the index, you can find the scripture that it says, by his stripe I'm healed. If you're going through a tough time in your life and the storm is raging, you can look in the index and find the scripture that said, peace be still. I came to tell you your answer is right here in the Bible, but you got to use the index that relate to what you're going through. I'm so glad. The trouble don't last always. I believe, Ella, that's what's wrong with a lot of us. We don't know how to use our index. We're calling everybody but God. We're calling on friends, but we ain't calling on God. We're looking in Facebook, but we ain't looking in Corinthia. 
We all on Snapchat, but we can't look in the song. We all on the internet trying to find things. But if you look in the Bible, he said, I will give you peace that passes understanding that if you keep your mind stayed on me. I don't know who I'm preaching to in here, but the devil can't take your mind if you've already given your mind to the Lord. Oh, yes. Let me close this message. You will discover in that index that you already got enough faith. Because all it takes is just the grain of a mustard seed to move the mountain in your life. The cross is an index cross is a place that we can go to and find the hope that we need. But not only is the cross an index, the cross is also an intersection. Oh Lord have mercy. The cross is an intersection. Beloved, an intersection is a place, listen, where two or more things meet and cross over one another. It is a place where these two or more things form what is known as a junction. Usually when we think of an intersection, Our minds are thinking of highways, pathways, and roads. Indeed, uh, this is the case because anyone who has driven in any length of time understands that you won't be able to go very far without every now and then running into an intersection. I want to tell you today that a lot can happen at an intersection. Good God Almighty. Uh, You will soon realize at an intersection that everybody ain't going the same way. You will note at an intersection Ella Cannon that everybody didn't start at the same place. You will also note that it An intersection, brothers and sisters, a choice must be made. I feel like shouting here. I submit this morning, yes, that the cross is an intersection. Yeah, why you say it, Harvey? Because everybody doesn't start at the same place. Neither is everyone going in the same direction. And every time you see this cross and intersection, a choice has got to be made. Yeah, because one thing is going to cross over another. And I want to tell you that it was at the cross, church, that I changed direction. I was going to hell. I feel like shouting here. I was going to hell and didn't care about going. But when I found myself at that cross, found myself at the intersection, I made a choice. I can't keep going the same direction. I can't keep going to hell like this. Oh no, it's time for me to change direction. Am I preaching to anybody in here? Yes, the cross church is an intersection. It is designed, listen, horizontally and vertically. Vertically, going up and down horizontally going from side to side hallelujah to the lamb in other words church it doesn't matter where you are 
Doesn't matter if you're on your way up or on your way down. It doesn't even matter if you go in from side to side. I came to tell you that at the cross, at the intersection, a choice has got to be made. Hallelujah. And at this intersection that Jesus hung there on the cross, a lot of other things began to intersect as he hung between heaven and earth. Innocence was hanging there, but guilt was hanging there too. Poor and rich intersected at the cross. The strong and the weak intersected at the cross. The lame and the leaping crossed over at the cross. Belief and unbelief made a cross at the cross. The up and the down found themselves at this cross. Time and eternity intersected at the cross. The righteous and the unrighteous made an intersection there at the cross of Calvary. The good and the bad hung there at the same time at the cross. Forward and backwards was hanging at the cross. Holiness and unholiness was hanging at the cross. The saved and the unsaved was there at the cross. The healed and the disease intersected at the cross. Unity and disunity found itself at the cross. Divinity and humanity was hanging there at the cross. Blindness and sight was hanging at the cross. Deafness and hearing made an intersection at the cross. The real and the artificial made an intersection at the cross. Part time and full time made his way at the cross. Pain and relief intersected at this cross. But most of all, life and death hung there at the cross. Ain't he all right? The cross is an injury. The cross is an index. But the cross is also an intersection. Can I tell you what else was there? You and I were there with Jesus at the cross. No wonder the song I just said. Hallelujah. I will cling to the old rugged cross. Good evening, church. How about somebody and tell them name of I intersected at the cross. My past and future met up at the cross. And I came to Jesus just as I was. Y'all gonna make me have church. I was weary, wound and sad. But when I intersected at that cross, I found in him a resting place. Ain't he all right? I say, ain't he all right? Is there anybody in here that know that you know if it had not been for that cross, you would still be going the wrong way. But when I found Jesus, I found somebody that picked me up and turned me around and played my feet on solid ground. I'm not ashamed to talk about that crawl. I'm not ashamed to let the world know that that cross has been my redemption. That cross has healed my body. That cross has brought me out. I would have been crazy already in prison or dead and in hell. But the cross looked beyond my fault and saw my knee. Can you lift your hand and praise the Lord for the crawl at the cross, at the cross where I first 
thought of life. It was there by faith. It was there I received my fire. I got joy. Anybody got joy? Joy at this crowd. Peace at the crowd. If you never see me no more, don't worry. I've been to the crowd. I've been to the play. I've been there. Can I tell you what he did? He fixed what couldn't be fixed. He turned it around. I came to tell you, the God I serve can turn around. Is there a witness in the building? Is there a witness that know that you know the blood? I said the blood. That blood turning around. Hey, shout yeah. If you say and not a shame, shout yeah. Somebody ought to shout. Thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. I thank him for the crowd. The crowd. Y'all don't hear me. I said the crowd. This is it. The crowd. The crowd. Shout yeah. Do you love him? Have you tried him? Ain't he all right? The crowd. I'll cling to it. The crowd. I'm going to quit church. I thought y'all were ready to have church up in here today. If you know you say, just lift your hand and shout, thank you, Lord. I thank you. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you. I'm going to leave it alone. We headed somewhere. And it is the cross. The cross. Cross. God, I thank you. I got a testimony. I said, I got a testimony. February the 14th. Hallelujah. I still remember. Just like yesterday. So the one that was February the 14th. 1989. When I came to that intersection, yes. LL was. Yes. When I got to that intersection, yes. I could see plain today. Yes. I knew I was headed to hell. Yes. But then I was going to hell. Yes. But when I got to that intersection, yes. the Lord said, Will you follow me? I got a better life for you. I can fix your life. I could change. Anthony, when I got to that intersection, I threw on a signal light. I said, I'm following Jesus. I said, I can't do it myself no more. I tried to do it myself. Somebody ought to be a witness in here. If you tried to do it yourself, you ought not be ashamed. Tell somebody, I tried to do it myself too. But oh, that cross. I got to the cross. I threw on my signal light, Ella. I threw on the signal light. I threw on the signal light to let the devil know I'm not going with you anymore. I didn't have to ask my friend to leave me. They left anyway. Because when I threw on that signal light and I turned right and I kept going straight and I found in him a resting place. Woo! Hallelujah. I found in him peace and passes understanding. I found in him everything I'd ever hoped for. Somebody been playing church a long time. But this ain't nothing to play with, church. I'm talking about the real cross here. If you know him for yourself, if you know what he done for you, 
Don't ever be ashamed. Don't ever be ashamed. No matter where you go. No matter how up you get. How high you go. No matter how many degrees you get. No matter how far you advance. Always remember. This cross. On the hill far away. That was an old rugged cross. They took my Lord and Savior up that cross. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head out of the elbows and then he died. He loved me so much. That should have been me up there. That should have been me up there. That should have been me up there. I hadn't always lived right, y'all. I haven't always did the right thing. That should have been me they stretched up on that cross. It should have been me they pierced in the side. It should have been me. But he loved me so much. He loved me so much, Calvin. He said, Harvey, you ain't got to go up there. You can't take it. You can't handle it. Let me take it for you. He picked up my cross. Woo, hallelujah. He picked up my cross. And he did it for me. And he died on that cross. But early. Early. Sunday morning. He got out the grave. Put all power in his hand. 